a river called Keith. Is it? You have a bit of ground bait, though, I'm not going to rely on you. Keith, Keith, I've got a bite! Oh, blimey! No, 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 mate. Not when you're in the right place and you've got the right bait. That's a smashing rod you got there, isn't it? Mm. Where'd you get that from? Oh, my uncle gave it to me. Give it to you? Not lent it to you? I give it to me. Oh, blimey, you've had a right result. Can I have a look? Yeah. Let's have a see. Can Cheers. I have a little fish if you want? Have a little fish? It'd be nice if I could have a little <laughs> fish, wouldn't it? Yeah. Let's see. What... Oh, that's a good old reel, that is. I reckon now I must have given him that when he come out of the ark, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. But there's one or two improvements you could make to this. First of all, the line is a bit strong for canal fish. You're, all right, you're not going to break on anything with line like that. It's too much of a problem to try and disconnect you up from the bottom if you, if you could snag. And it's also very likely to put the fish off. And you see, on the reel here, see that there? That's what we call the spool, right? Yes. Now, when you put the line on the spool, you want it to be as full up as possible. Because how these reels actually work, if you, that's called a bail arm, that bit there. And you probably notice when you open it, all oh, the line falls off. Now, I see when you was casting, you were sort of pulling line like that. Well, when it's full up, you don't have to do that because the line just falls off the front. So if you give it a bit of a swing, right, if you, let's wind it a bit and show you Well, that's a nice noise. I heard that row for a long time. If you open that up like that and just track the line there, as you swing it, that line will fly off and the float will go where you want it to. Does, that, does, does the reel make that noise all the time? Uh, I don't know, there's a little switch there. Let's see what that does. Oh no, mercifully, that's made it silent. Problem that will give you though, the handle can turn backwards and that, see how that line's come off like that? That can cause a tangle. So while you're still not sure of how to handle it, we'll put that back on and then the handle can't go backwards, see? Right, let's have a look at the rod. It's a bit of an old beast for a canal. Normally, you see, because you use light tackle on canals, because most of the fish ain't too big, normally, because you use light tackle, the rod would be much slimmer and lighter than this, but let's have a look. Well, it's been a good rod in its time. It's got all lined rings. Hello. Smell. You, got, you ain't lost that already, have you? No, I say, give it to me. No, it wasn't it, when you got it. When he? No. <laughs> oh, well, he ain't give you too much away, either, does he? Now, there should be another ring on there, so the line goes through it right to the end. Like that, it's going to, the line's going to twist around, you're going to get tangles and other problems, you see. Let's have a look. Apart from it, not too bad. Hello, you chose the right float, not quite put on properly. Yeah, he told me to use that float on a canal. Did he? So I said there's a canal near where I live. Yeah. And that's where I, I usually go. Well, he didn't show you how to put it on the line? No, he just right. told me to use that one. Did he? OK. Well, what you've done, you've done it how you've seen it in the pictures. It's got a float rubber on there at the top. That really don't want to be there. Now, if you just take that off, the float can slide up and down the line all over the place like that. And the problem that that gives you is when your bait goes in and your weights take it down, the line just goes through and the float will just lay on the surface. Get a bit more line out. The float will just lay on the surface like that and the fish could pull that all day and you'd never get a signal. So what you've got to do is you've got to find some way of stopping it on the line. Make sure no one's going on. You go in the middle of the estate, never see anybody walking along here hardly, do you? No. Like tying a knot? No, don't want to tie a knot. See, to make it easy to cast, what we do, see those weights there? Yeah. Well, they're a bit too near the hook. What we want to do is trap the float on the line between a couple of these weights. I'll show you what I mean. We'll bet the float rubber. No, we'll leave that. Yeah, we'll leave that on there. It's all right, be out of the way. I'm glad to see he's giving you non lead weights here. Definitely the non toxic ones, you can tell by the. What's non lead weights? Well, a few years ago, all these weights used to be made out of lead. 
and they caused one or two problems with getting tangled up with birds and birds used to eat them and everything so they stopped using lead now and we've gone on to these, they call them non-toxic flakes, they're made out of combinations of other materials. Now what we're going to do, I'll move that float rubber down to there, let's see what we've got about four foot of water here I think. Why don't you just leave the float rubber on? Well what happens is, if you leave that float rubber on, as you cast out with this wind, the line will float on the surface oh. and the wind will blow it along and keep pulling it out of position all the time. Just as the fish goes to grab hold of it, it disappears. I mean, like your mum put your dinner in front of you and as you went to eat, if you took it away, would you? <laughs> that's why you don't... <laughs> you wouldn't get a chance. <laughs> no, that's right. Now, let's get another one from down here. Nip it off with your thumbnail. Do you bite your nails? Yeah. Well, stop. Why? You can't get these shot off with short nails. I use my teeth. No, use your nails, it's better. Right, that's that. Now, we'll leave one down the bottom. Let's see how that performs. We'll have you fishing soon, Mac. No, no chance. You'll get into it. Right, let's see. If that'll stand up. Oh, it's struggling. Oh, there you go. Well, that's all right, yeah, we'll get a couple of boats more into that later on. Now, let's have a look at your hook. Hmm. It's a bit on the large side. Do you want a smaller It's one? a smashing knot. Do you want a smaller? Uh, well, I don't know. What sizes you got? Let's have a look. Uh, I've got all different sizes. Yeah, let's bring this round here and see it properly. That's it. There's one. Hello. Hook's on how to do it. 1988. It's got the wrong way around. It's 1898. Now, what have we got here? Oh, too big. Oh, dear, oh dear. What have we got? I think that's the smallest. Size 6, size 12. See, with hooks as well, the bigger the number, the smaller the hook. So, number 6 is quite enormous for this kind of fishing. Number 8. Number two. Hang thought, on, hang on. Smaller than hang on, I've got my fishing jumper on. Somewhere. Packet of hooks. Now, 22. look at the size of that. I'd say that's probably a 14. Right? Now that is a 22. Now these are quite strong hooks, carbon chub. They're already tied on a bit of thin line as well because if we can get a bit of thinner line on, it's going to give us more chance Why is to it get a bite. Carbon chub? Well, there's a fish called a chub that's quite strong and you tend to catch them by, see those brambles that you've got over there? Yeah. Right. Well, on some of the canals, you'll get chub living under those and carp and big fish. Because in the autumn, of course, you get blackberries and things like that. And if you get wild roses, you'll get the fruits of the flowers drop off into the water and the fish will make a meal of them. So they like to live, they're also very shy, they like to live under canopies of cover where they feel safe and secure, out the way of people trying to catch them. And because underneath there, there's probably all tangles of branches and everything. When you hook them, you've got to try and get them out quite quickly, otherwise they'll tangle you up in it. You're getting enthralled here, mate. Yeah, yeah I'm learning it as well. <laughs> so what you've got to do is use quite strong hooks to pull them out, because if you've got a very, very fine wire hook, it might open up. So these, especially the steel's forged and tempered a bit to make it much stronger, so they won't straighten out. So you can really ease them out nice and steadily. Now, See if I can get one of these out. And in the done. summer, do, do, would you get the fish under this so they keep cool? Mm, you, they might do that, but more often than not, especially in canals, they'd be under there out the way of the boat traffic. Because if you live in the middle here in the summer, you couldn't fish here in July or August because you'd have a boat through every 30 seconds. They'd be all mud stirred up off the bottom. And of course, you can't see them near bridges. It's a good idea always to give yourself at least 50 or 60 yards from a bridge. So if a, when the boats keep coming through and it all stirs up mud, they'll be perched down there. No, no, perch don't like the mud. That's why the perch live, un live under the bank as well. Now, I don't know if you notice, can you see that float is actually going from right to left? Yeah. Now, the wind is going from left to right. Now, why do you reckon that is? Give in, you don't know, do you? Is right, it? I'll tell you. Go on. If the wind blew all the water that way, mm. it'd all pile up down there and there'd be a slope. 
and there'll be people queuing up to water ski. <laughs> well, that don't happen, the water has to go that way, and then as it gets down there, it comes back underneath, yeah. and what's happened there is the undertow has picked up our float and is taking it along that way. See, so normally on any still water or canal, the float's always likely to go into the wind rather than with it. In fact, if it goes with the wind, now it's blowing round a bit, so it looks, it looks like it's going always away. Oh, we've only caught a fish. Whoa, that's a proper one. Look at that. Whoa. Don't say careful because it is really quite sharp and they could turn septic. People say they're poisonous, but they're not. How do you hold it just like that, like What you do, see I've got my fingers on its gills, mm. like that. Stop if you, it. As you pick them up, you'll just find that collapses down and you can hold them nicely like that. See, and as I predicted, it's got the worm in its throat and there's the hook right in its lip. See? And we just take that out. How like did you look that? Because it looks a bit small for it. No, it? it's not. No, it's Oi, I did look it, didn't I? So you can't argue with that, can you? No. There's the proof of the pudding, look. No. Have a hold. Well, wait a minute, I just want to show you something. See, it's getting a little bit, a little bit chubby around the belly. Mm. Well, this time of the year, as it's getting towards spring, they get ready to spawn the fish, and that's probably getting into spawning condition. This is a female, because it's mm. got a little fat belly there, and that's full of eggs. Well, I'm going to put it straight back in a second. I just want to show you this. It's not in any distress at the moment. The hands are nice for What? happens is about two or three weeks time you have to stop fishing and it's the closed season so the fish can go and breed in comfort without being interfered with by great big oafs like us. There yeah, look, lovely little fish. Now do you want to hold him and put him back? Yeah. No, 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 you're not touching yet, make your hands wet. Don't fall in. Yeah. If you do, don't fall in too far. <laughs> Alright, and nice and wet. Now take it gently and don't throw it back. I want you to put your hands under the water and, and let it swim out, right? Mm. Now don't, yeah. you want to hold it like you hold a yeah. bar of soap, so it won't jump out, all right? Soap, what's that? You don't know what soap is. <laughs> soap is basically <laughs> in your house to hide the money under it, oh no. Go on, got him tightly. Yeah. Right, now put him back and just let him swim out your hands. Go on. He's got his gill rakers out there, so come on. Smash him. What a right result we've had there, eh? <laughs> Drop it in again. I thought I had a bite there. No, I'll tell you when you've got a bite, mate. Mm -hmm. so it's hard to tell because the wind's blowing. Yeah, that's right. You've only got a little tiny bit of float sticking up, see? If it stays calm, at least it's easy to tell it off, off yeah. the bite. Don't hold your breath for it to stay calm, though, will you? No. <laughs> yeah, that's a bite strike. Oh! Oh, you got one. Swing him to me. Swing him to me. That's it. Oh, another perch. Look. It's a bit... It hasn't got the... It's black as the other one is. No, no. That's because it's living in deeper water, I expect. That was nearer the middle, that one. Mm. Right, we'll just unlock him. Well yeah. Little bit of tube worm there. Anakin, okay, do you want to put him back and all? Come on, now you do it. Shall I do it? Shall I stay with it? Listen, mate, now you're caught one. It's about time we get home. Your tea will be ready. Dad, can I go next week, please? Well, I'll see. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing myself. I'll tell you what, I'll take him with me next weekend if you like. Do you mind? <laughs> of course I don't. He's keen enough. I have more trouble getting him home than getting him there. Well, it suits me. I'll have to have a word with the wife first, though. Huh? I'll tell you what, drop us off home. I'll have a word with her for you. That might convince her. Fair enough. All right. Lovely. Come, Lou, let's go. Today we met Dad to make key. He wants to take me out fishing next Saturday. Can I go, please? 
Hello. Well, hello. You know Keith, don't you? Yeah, hello, Keith. What do you think, Mac? It's I don't up mind. To you. I said we'd ask you. So well, you I think. don't mind. That's fair enough. What's, what's he going to need? Well, he's going to want some warm clothing, mm -hmm. well, and boots. No need to worry about tackle. I've got loads of that, as you can imagine, at least for the time being. Um, probably a few sandwiches and a hot flask, I would think, mm. judging by the weather. I think we can manage that. All right. Lovely. It's all right with me. Right, you. Half past seven, Saturday morning. I'll toot up if you ain't ready. I'm off on my own. He'll be ready. Right. <laughs> sure he will. I'll see, yeah. see you then. Okay. okay. Ta -da. Bye. Ta -da. Bye. Ta -da. Bye. This is Lee. Hi, Lee. Desperate to Hi. go fishing, so I'm going to take him to Lanier and catch a few fish. How's it going fishing? Do you know? It's been fishing well. Is it really? Yeah. Dovecot? Yeah, yeah, it's been going well. Been right. yourself? Yeah, I went last night. Did you? Yeah, a few roach, a few bream. Did you? Yeah. I'm not going at night time, I'm going in the daytime. I don't like it in the dark. I'm afraid there's too many things crawl about. I don't know what they are. Maggots? Yep. Good. Reds, whites been going well over there. Really? Mm -hmm. Give us a pint. Mix? Yeah, give us a pint of mix. They'll do. Okay. Uh, oh, <laughs> can I have a bait box, please? <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, one day I'm going to come into the shop with a bait box. There you go, mate. You wouldn't recognise me, then. Bit of maze? Yeah, bang a bit, mate. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, as well, we better have a licence. Okay. I've not yep. been so far this year, and I keep forgetting the angling one starting January, so I'll have a licence. Better do one for Lee as well, because okay, he'll be yep. a regular from now on. One senior, one junior. Yes, please. See this man? You've got to make him your friend. Every time you come into the tackle shop, this is the bloke that's going to tell you where you're going to catch your fish and what you're going to catch him on. There you go, mate. If you'd like to fill them in. Yeah. How's the river? Do you know? river's good as well. It's fine is down it? nicely now. Has yeah. it? Ooh. There you go. I'm going to catch some fish this afternoon. Right. How long are you down there for? I'm only going for the afternoon, just a couple of hours drown some maggots, really. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I met him on the canal last week, <laughs> and uh, he was really struggling, so I thought uh, I'd treat him to an afternoon out. Why not? Okay. Right. That's smashing. Okay, mate. Anything yeah, else great. No, nope, that's all, I think. That's That'll 10, 11, 60 then, please, mate. This wind's terrible, isn't it? I'm gonna blow my ears inside out in a minute. Not much further now. Yeah, oh, mate, this looks good to me. I think we'll stop here. Why? Well, for a start, although most angles will always tell you to sit facing into the wind, this wind's a northeaster, and I don't sit facing into northeasters because they're too cold. But no, I know this bit of the lake quite well. It's reasonably deep here, close in. We've got plenty of cover from these dead sedges and reeds in the edge. There's that little bush there sometimes holds some fish. And over there, see where those reed stalks go out there? Yeah. Well, that's like an underwater island. And that gives plenty of shelter for fish, loads and loads of cover for them. And with any luck, despite the cold, I reckon we might get one or two. How about you? Yeah. Right. So that's right, is that why we cho you've chosen this wind? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You've always got to choose somewhere where the fish want to be. Got to think like a fish. See? Don't start eating maggots. What plant is that with that kind of little...? It's a bulrush. Sometimes this time of year you'll see them just bursting open and the white seeds starting to come out of them. All right. Yeah. Let's get ready. 
Right there, here we are, tucked in this little corner of Dovecot Lake at Linear Fisheries. And I've tackled up already, and I'll just show you what I've done. First of all, I've got to tell you that when we plumbed the depth, I was surprised to find out that it was 11 foot deep. I was told this bit was about five or six feet. But when I put the plumbing on and chucked it out there, it's sort of nine feet there, just off the rod end. And going out where I intend to fish out towards those reed stalks, it's about 11 feet deep. So I reckon with this cold wind, it might just hold a few fish. I'm going to show you what I've done on the tackle front. I've got a size 18 hook, which I'm going to put two maggots on to start with. There, because I'm going to fish probably double maggot, one red and one white, or two whites. And I've got one small shot about, oh, it must be close on two feet from the hook. Normally, I'd have one a lot nearer, but because the fish are likely to be shy, because of the coldness, I've put a longer hook length on so I can have a certain amount of it laying on the bottom so it's sort of camouflaged with it laying there the fish are less likely to see it than if it was hanging straight down mm. like that. See? Yeah. That makes sense? Good. Oh, that didn't take long did it? No. Bite already? What well, do you reckon it is Keith? Well that didn't take long. Well here. Have a look you can have a go for yourself. Where is it? There it is. Well, leave it there, I'm going to net it. It's only a little one, but we don't want you to lose your first proper fish on my rod, do we? How do you feel now? Good. You don't know what to say, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't think I was going to do that, did you? Oh, there's only a little tiddly roach. It's got a bit twisted in the mesh of my net. We'll get it out of there. Let's see. There. I thought we'd catch a roach or two. Lovely condition, look perfect tail, perfect fins. Mm. Orange half to its eye. Lovely little fish, isn't they? Do My favourite roach. Do you reckon we'll catch a lot more? Well, I don't know, I hope so. Let's dive him into the net head first. Pop, there we go. Good, right. Where there's one, hopefully there's plenty more. See if you can get some, oh, you're going to put the maggots out. See if you can get a few maggots around there. Quick, then we'll put the lid on to stop them escaping. Go on. Oh. I'll wind it into there, don't worry. That's Did it. you say put the lid on the maggots? Yeah, yeah just put the lid on just loosely. Why? Right. Well, it stops them getting wet. When maggots get wet, they climb everywhere. Especially them little red ones we've got in there. Some of them are pinkies, and they'll be out like nobody's business. Now, it's thick spool reel like yours. Yeah. This one. And slightly different in as much as it's about 20 years newer. And it's got all sorts of ball bearings and things like that. And I like these. That opens with a flick like that. Now, that's... I wouldn't have one like that if I were you yet. Because this is a match reel, you see. It's for real high speed fishing. And you're interested more in yeah. quality than speed. You want yeah. to catch nice fish rather than catch lots quickly. Do you reckon it's... I reckon it's bigger than your one. What species? I don't know. I expect it's a roach. Feels like a roach. We're just going for those weeds. There's no pike down there. Well, you don't know what a pike is, do you? No. Oh, pike are nuisances because they eat roach. There it is. There we come. Oh, smashing. Jealous? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you'll probably catch a big one one day. There, look at that. That's probably four or five ounces. It's nice though. Yeah, they're lovely, aren't they? Oh, I really mm. like roach. I don't, know, I don't know what they make kippers out of, but I hope it ain't roach. <laughs> right, I had a couple of maggots on. Taking it off now. It's brains eased up a bit. Let's put a red and a white one on this time, eh? Throw some maggots in. Yeah. Do it quick. Perfect. Right. Now carefully, come round here and you have a fish. Now treat this with great care 
and respect. Don't worry, I'll just chuck it in the water for you. All right, can you get over there? Yeah. Sit. Right. Comfortable? Good. Be careful when you wind in with that mm. one. I'll tell you why. It's a oh. very, very far... Oh, didn't take long, did it? No. Oh, another... Hey, you right mascot you are. Keep it out. Stand oh. up a bit. You can stand, just pull the rod forward, because it's going near those weeds. Try and pull it out the weeds. Can you? Careful, do it gently. Do it gently, that looks like a really good fish. Careful. Oh, look at that. Now I'll put the net there. Just try and bring it over the net. It's a massive oh, fish. Oh, well done. It's a massive Look at that. <laughs> That's an absolutely brilliant roach. Look That's at it. It's massive. That's a real smasher. <laughs> Just shows I'm betting you. Oh, well then, you might be one day. Or at least as good at the moment. Right, let's slip it, hold the hook. Let's slip him in the net. Shall I put some maggots on? No, in a minute, let's put him in the net first. That is a super fish. Slip him in gently. Lovely roach. Beautiful roach, my favourite. That was a real big one as well. It's a bonus to catch a fish size, probably 12 ounces. Maybe even 14 ounces. It didn't then. fight much, did it? Well, it did a bit. When it got near those weeds, it didn't like it, did it? No, but... Right. Let's put a couple more maggots on for you. Oh! There's another one already. Does it feel as big? Yeah. Difficult to tell, should I get near these the reeds. reeds? Is it going for the reeds again? Yeah. Try oh. and that's it. Oh, you've learnt well. You've Just learnt see well. it. Get... Oh, look at that swirl. Get him up. Here oh, it's a beautiful roach. Oh. One more. Come up you come. Oops. One more up. It's gone into the weed. There. That's got him. That is another oh, it's his twin the brother. Line's stuck in the weed. Don't worry I'll about that. Just let the line slack. Just one handle backwards, that's it. Let the line go slack. Don't pull, let the line go slack. See, That's it. Sir. Oh. See, I'm tempted bit... to stay, but I tell you what, I'm getting so cold. You yeah. must be freezing. Your mum would be worried sick about us being yeah. out in this. I think we'd better call it a day, don't you? Yeah. Let's slide him into the net. If I take you home and you get a stinking cold, she might not let you go again. <sighs> Oh dear. Right. Come on, give me the rod. I think it's time. Can you take me again, Keith? Well, I don't mind, but we'll have to ask your mum and dad. And we'll have to chat to dad about getting you some gear of your own, eh? Yeah. How would that be? Good. Right, let's see. Get out of the way. Over there. Well, I'll beat you. <laughs> Probably won't be for the first time either. Yeah. Let's have a look and see what we've caught. Right, let's get these fish out. Yeah. Oh, I've, I've enjoyed it today. Yeah. It's been put good. them back. Get you home. Over to that car as quick as possible. Mm. And can't home to, to mum. Can't wait to get home and tell me mum the size of the fish I caught. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell him roach. Always. I it's don't like to use a net too often. But it is nice to see what we've caught. There's more in here than what I thought there was. It's amazing how quickly yeah. time goes. There's more fish in here than what I thought we'd caught. Leave them down like that. Let them swim out. There they go. Got a few still left there. With any luck, catch some more of them next time, eh? Yeah. Seem all that long ago, does it? When you had that funny little rod with the top eye missing. Yeah. Remember we caught those perch? A brilliant day, wasn't it? Yeah. Hope we can do as good today. Just Pro we'll catch a lot of perch. I don't know. Man, don't normally get so many perch. You get roach and all sorts of things. But with that frost last night, the sun's lovely now. But there was ice just up as we drove over the main bridge up in the town. There was ice on the cut, and I thought we'd really struggle. 
Right, get your reel on. Remember, get it right. That's it, lined up. Good. It's a good bit of canal here, just outside Milton Keynes. It's well stocked, roach, odd bream. Definitely some perch and gadging. Although, as I say, the water's gone very clear with the frost. Never know what's about. Do you reckon we'll catch a lot of fish, lad? I don't know, but I think we'll catch some because this sun's obviously making the water get warmer quite quickly. If we don't catch any this morning, I'm sure we'll get a few a bit later on. Now these are the sort of floats we'll be using on the canal. And you can see... They're funny. Well, they're much more delicate than what we used before. You remember on the lake we used slightly bit bigger wagglers than these. What's, what's the reason for it going in like that at the I'll bottom? I'll show you. I'll show you. Now these are proper canal floats and I'll take them in order. There's three different materials. These three are made out of balsa wood, all right? That one, very, very long, very slender, perfect for catching fish on the drop on punch bread. And on the bottom, it's got a swivel. What's that, what's that do? Right, what that does is your line goes through there and then you lock it on the line with a shot, like a normal waggler, but it collapses easily. So when you wind in, or when you pull in, if you're fishing with a pole, with a rod, when you wind in, it just completely goes slack and offers no resistance at all. So you're really right through to the fish. And all you can feel is the fish. It's just a normal, tiny little swivel that gets used on all sorts of things. Does it help weigh down the float? Slightly, it adds a little bit of weight to the float, but we load it at the bottom anyway. Most of the shot goes at the bottom, just two tiny shot down the line. Normally use that for fishing punch bread. Top looks a bit like it said, better days, but it's still very functional float net. Pop him in there. These other two balsa wood floats, very finely tapered. One's a bit more finely tapered than the other. This one you'd use for fishing off the bottom or just about at depth with very small baits like squats, which we'll go into in a minute. And this one is a bit fatter, slightly thicker at the top, and you'd use that for caster. Now with squats, you're using maybe three tiny shot down the line and you'll see that drop that float to three till it gets to the tip like that. With a caster, using slightly heavier shot down the line, because normally with a caster you're laying on, fishing over depth with a bit of shot on the bottom. So that'll just drop the one shot, so you can see if you're getting a bite on the drop, and then that slightly thicker top will hold it still, should there be any drift caused by the wind. Remember how the wind was pulling the float? Yeah. At the other place we went. Not quite so windy as that today, it's a much nicer day. Mm. Right, that's the balsa floats out of the way. Now the other two, that is a homemade peacock quill float. That bottom bit there's made Did you out. make it yourself? Yes, I did. Made out of the feathers of a peacock quill. That's a little bit of thinner peacock in there. And that is a bit of cane. And this one you've got to fish off the bottom because any sort of um, bait just dragging the bottom that will disappear out the sight. It's so sensitive. So you always fish off the bottom with that. It's got a little eye at the bottom. See? Yeah. For the line to go through. So it sits very tight to the line itself with the shot either side. If you have a long leg on a float, a little bit out the bottom I call a leg, if you have a long one it tends to have quite a big splosh when it hits the water. You don't want to do that on a canal because it will put them off. And this one is made out of a drinking straw. See? <laughs> Just like you're getting your drink, and the top is a thinner bit of drinking straw, and then a bit of plastic, a bit of nylon bristle. And that is well used for fishing off the bottom with squats. And it's loaded, there's a little bit of brass in the bottom there as a loading. How much weight does it take? Oh, it takes very little, about four micro shot, four little tiny dust shot, one either side with a little quick change attachment on, one either side, and then two down. And that's for in the summer when the fish are right up in the water and you dart it across at the far bank. Somewhere like, see where that bush is over there? Yeah. Well, if you're fishing quite close to that bush with a squat, you can flick a few squats over with your catapult, pop this out on top of it, and the fish will come out from the cover of that bush. They'll go under there as protection from the boats, you see. They'll come out from the cover of that bush, take your squat, you'll get a bite and you'll catch them straight away. It's a broken down tree, not a bush. Well, it was a bush once, it's now a late bush. Right. Now, let's pick one of these to put on, and I think what we'll use today 
is because we're not going to fish too sensitive, I think we'll fish with a caster one. Don't you? Yeah. Right, let's put it on your line with a quick change attachment. These are a special small quick change attachment. Just made out of very fine silicone rubber with a swivel in the bottom so you get no tangles. Just thread that on your line and then you can show me that loop knot that I've taught you. Tie the loop knot in the end, we're going to put the hook on now. Shall I tie a loop? Yeah, tie a loop. Right, now these hooks I've tied at home. They're little tiny hooks, that's a size 22, very fine wire, tied to one pound breaking strain line, finer than we've used before, and I've got some others there that are silver. As it's a canal, we can be really sparing the bait, don't need much at all. I've got some squats that are now about a fortnight old, and any other maggot a fortnight old would be no good. That comes out turned into flies. Well, what then. squats these are little house flies, maggots. The house flies that buzz around your lights in the summer, that's what these are. But when they're maggots, they're the only maggot that will go back on the feed once it's been lifted. With all the blue bottle maggots and the, the green fly maggots, the ordinary maggots and pinkies, that is, they'll never eat again. But these will, and they're vegetarians, they eat bread. And in there you'll see crusts and bits of brown bread. Where every time I get them from fishing, Get a slice of brown bread, damp it under the tap, put it in, and they eat it. And they are as good as new. You couldn't buy better squats than that, straight off a bait farm. One or two little red pinkies in there as well. And there's some more red pinkies here. That'll give you an idea how cold it is. They're scarcely moving. Two colours of red. The fluorescent red, which are particularly good in this very cold weather. And the normal dark blood red, which perch seem to like quite a bit. All right. Yeah. And here we've got just a very, very few yellow maggots. yellow maggots that I've had left over from previous outings. And if we should get lucky, or fancy having a go at a quality fish, we could try a yellow maggot Let's on the hook as an alternative. I'll throw him out, we don't want to squat. Right, now, catapult. Have a practice, I'm sure this is the last thing you'd ever want to do in your life. <laughs> Take the catapult, put some squats in, and fire them over towards that bush, not quite into the bush. I'm but just a few. Oh, just a few, just a few. Yeah, it's still winter. Wait, do you want it by the Just bush? short of that bush over there, see how good a shot you are. But you could do it with a stone. Oh, oh. oh, that weren't very good, was it? No. Still got Oh, nothing. that was better. Yeah, put a few more and have another go. I never that's held it. it there, that's why. Yeah, that's it. Like an expert. Go. Nice little sideways swing. Not all right. Have your head swing then. That's it. Perfect. Rod tip under. Get the line sunk. Quick jerk. Jerk the rod. Near enough. A little quick flick to the side. Give it a quick flick sideways. Get rid of the rest of that line. Yeah, like, like this. Let me show you. There. You are. Gone. Now let's see if I'm a better shot than you. See if I can get some squats around that float. You get too good a shot with this, I'll have you coming out and me firing me bait out. That weren't a bad Why shot. Why are there barges along here? Well, despite the fact it's such a lovely water for fishing, it's still very much a working canal. These are mainly holiday craft. We've got a marina just down the road. But sometimes the fish hug the far bank they live under the boats, they give them comfort, warmth and security. Most of these are holiday craft, but you still get plenty of boats carrying wood and coal, all sorts of things up and down the canal, because it joins the Thames to the rest of the country, you see? The whole yeah. system goes oh, for miles and miles. I think that might be a little bite. Strike, strike, strike. <laughs> that didn't take long, did it? Oh, look at that gadget. Yeah, let me I had one of them before. Ain't you? No. That's a beautiful gudgeon, that is. They don't normally go this big. There's quite a few in this bit of the canal. Look, drop your hook in and I'll show you what they're like. Look. Purple spots almost along its back. Lovely speckled fins. And can I two... hold him? Yeah, you can put him, oh, put him gently in the net. 
Yeah. No, not in that net. Put him gently no. in the keep. I'll get my hands with it. Oh, that's a good. Well done. Well remembered. Well remembered. Two little barbels either side of its mouth, see? Yes. Yeah. Right. Right. Slip him in the net gently. Well, that's it. That's it. Right, quick. Let's get out and catch another one. <laughs> That's terrific, that is two on the trot, look. Perch, careful, mind your fingers. Remember what I told you? Yeah. They're the first fish you ever caught. Do you remember on the worm? Yeah. Be very, very careful with them. Oh, look. They've got those spines. Lovely. Whoa. There you see, look. A little fat belly. Like the one I showed you when we first went out. Do you remember? Yeah. Back belly when they're getting ready to spawn. Slipper in the net. Oh, it's a roach. Oh, that's a nice roach. Especially for this cold water. Let's swing him in. Oh, no, get out to the net. That isn't a roach. It is a roach, you know. It's silver. Could have been so. Well, you're right. You're right. What is it? Ah. That's a roach brain hybrid. What are they? Well, it's a cross between a roach and a bream. What? They've not got the same amount of colour in their fins. Slightly different shape around the mouth. And so instead of having that orange eye, yes. see, it's a bit yellow, almost a pop eye. They get a very little colour. Instead of being that lovely blue colour that roach are, they're much altogether greyer. They just don't look right. See, the head just don't look like a normal roach's head. What do you mean the bream and the roach mate? Well, really, what happens is the female bream lays her eggs and the yeah. male roach swims over and fertilises them, you see. Let's put them in. That's it, Jenny. Oh, he's all acid, he's swung away. They, they like the pinky. Well done. So try double? Try double, yeah. Try double. I'll put some more squats out for you. Might even be better to try fluorescent and the red, yeah? Yeah. Perch like the red. What? Perch like the red, that's what you said. Perch like the red, yeah. Well, Joe, I'm catching a few more of them nice hybrids or even roach, would you? Just another red one, please. Oh, two fluorescents, never mind. Oh, I thought it was a red one. That's it. That's it. Right there. A few more squats in. Oh, another bite. Wait a bit longer mm. for that one. That's that yeah. double maggot. I think we have to go back to a single, don't you? Yeah, missed it. of stuff live under the water. Oh, there's all sorts of things. You wouldn't believe it. I mean, I know a few of the things, but nowhere near all of them. I'll tell you what, though. I know a man who does. Can we go and see him? Right, Lee. This is the man I was telling you about before. He's Steve Griffiths, who's a regional fisheries officer for British Waterways. And he's been along the bank this morning having a few dives in with his net. And it uh, looks like he's coming up now with another lot. He's already got us one pile of goodies. Oh, I've got plenty of fish. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Uh -huh. Looks like the weigh-in on the winter league. Uh -huh. I think we do all right. There's a, a little skim of bream. Yeah. Tiny little bream. You can is, is it a silver bream or is it a, a common no, bream? No, I think that's a common bream. His, his eye's quite small. Uh, a silver bream has a bigger eye. Yeah, it's quite difficult very, to tell at that stage, isn't it? Very, very delicate, those are. Mm. Put them straight in. Some of these other fish are a bit hard, yeah? We've got quite a lot of minnows. That's a fair-sized minnow, isn't it? It's not bad, is it? <laughs> Few minnows. Is that a stickle back there? And uh, there's a your... stickle back, yeah. That's a, um, the usual common three spine stickle back. Oh, yeah. I don't know whether there is any ten spined in here. We'll have to see. Oh, there we are. I've mentioned ten spine, and there's one straight away. There's a ten spine oh, stickle back in there. They're much more pra... unusual, aren't they? Yeah, they're much rarer. Perhaps you can see the difference between them. If they lay still for long enough. Yes, they will. Yeah, that's... That one's just starting to go a bit pink there on its 
belly, that's get, I suppose because it's getting near spawning yeah, time. Yeah, that's right, yeah, it's probably a male. It'll be a little male, let's put him in. Starting to colour up. And see if we can yeah. see the ten spine. Yeah. Altogether slimmer. Yeah, there's a couple more ten spine. They look prehistoric. Oh, for rare yeah. ones, we've got quite a lot, haven't we? Yeah, we're doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, usually where they do occur, they're actually quite common, but like they're, they're not very well distributed throughout the country. What's that? Oh, no, that's a, a big freshwater shrimp, Lee. There we are, that's, that's quite a big one for a freshwater a shrimp. See how he moves sideways there? And oh. he swims through the water and he can swim quite fast once he gets going. I don't know if we managed to spot him when we put him in the water. Need a few of them for an omelette, wouldn't there you? There he goes, can you see him? Yeah. And let's see what else. Yeah. Now here's one that looks very like a shrimp. And you might recognise this as something you've seen in your dad's garden. Wood and lice. That, well, it's very like a wood lice and it's actually called a, a pond lice and it's a similar, similar species. I think there's actually, is there actually two there? Yes, they're actually paired up ready for breeding. And you quite often see them like that. Back, in, back into the water. All right, so now you've got a couple of toads in a similar position in that. That's right. We, we, that when we've had a there. dip That's on. interesting because they, they pair up, don't they? And the female, That's as usual, does all the donkey work. Is that, the a, around. is that a Tim spine stickleback? That's right. Oh, you can see his spines yeah. as well. Yeah, it's very clear, that yeah, is. Yeah. Very, yeah. yeah. That's the she, it's in there, That's the female she, underneath yeah. doing all the work. She lays her eggs and then the, the male just fertilises them. And he's going to be yeah. quite aggressive. If I tried to, to oh, catch yeah, her, he'd probably... Take, he'll take some surprising off. Yeah. yeah. In fact, they reckon that they could, they'll actually blind fish by gripping onto them so tightly. If you've got ornamental fish in a garden pond... Shall we release him straight away? Yeah, I, th I think he's probably as well just go, let him go, eh? Just pop him in his little string. Let him get on with his business. That's it, yeah. Not spoiling his some, day. There's some... Snails in here, yeah. they're, they're an important source of food for the fish. They, the fish like those to eat. There we can see those. I'd love to know why these bits of wood are walking about the bottom of this tray. Right, well, if you just hold on while I put these fish back into the water. Right, I see. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. And we'll have a look what's in the tray. Right. Here, there's a, we've got some bits of woods walking That's about. That's the one that was walking about. That one there. And in actual fact, that's a caddis fly larva, and inside there, <laughs> inside there, there, there's actually a little grub who, who builds a little hole out of stick so that the fish doesn't realise that it's a, a grub because the fish would eat it straight away. <laughs> Though some of the trout get quite clever and eat the lot, and I dare say a few other fish do as well. And they actually make all sorts of different cases. There's one made out of sticks that's quite differently. Sometimes they're made out of stones. There's, they, they would all be different species, although we say they're caddis fly larva, there are lots and lots of different species of caddis fly, and actually lots and lots of different species of most of the things that we've got in here. And you can tell the difference because the, the, the cases are quite different, all made of different materials. Some, sometimes they make them of little stones, sometimes of sticks, sometimes of leaves. We've got lots of different ones in there. In amongst all these dozens and dozens of fish. I've noticed one there that's going to be much too small for me to catch. And it looks like a loach. It, it is. Huh. <laughs> well, it's a clever loach, isn't it? <laughs> it is a loach, but it's not the common loach. It looks almost prehistoric in yeah, shape, doesn't it? Does. it? And it's actually a spined loach, I think. I, I don't come across those usually in the part of the country where I I'm from, but uh, since I've never seen one that looks quite like that before, I'm fairly sure well, it is a spine loach, yeah. <laughs> Why do you things do change from region to region, oh, don't yes. they? One river's yeah. species can look quite different from another. That's right. Well, it's quite difficult to tell because the, the environment will change the, the shape of yeah. things. And also, the, when we say a water boatman, there might be three or four different sorts of water boatmen. In fact, I think I've spotted about three sorts of water boatmen there. That's the, the greater water it's boatman. A big one. He's got that lovely pattern on his back, on yeah, his belly rather. Yeah, well, they actually swim. This is his belly, but he swims upside down. Oh, yeah and he's got some big jaws underneath there, they'll actually give you quite a nasty bite. I and believe he, you. he hangs around hanging underneath the water. Yeah. He comes up underneath anything that's stranded on the water and eats it and he will actually eat quite a few fish as well. And now here's something that's really special. Look at this one. Oh, now that's the size of a stag beetle. That's that's a great diving beetle and he stays in the water and catches little fish and eats them and he'll actually eat little fish perhaps as big as this little rod here 
he wouldn't hesitate to eat that. And he actually has a larva that lives underwater that's even more carnivorous than he is. And these will actually come out of the water at night and fly around. And you'll sometimes find them on the garden path because they see the reflection of the light in the window and think it's water and try to land in it. But that's one of the hazards that all the little fish have to face before they grow up from being an egg to the fish that hopefully you'll be able to catch one day. See these swan mussels here, Steve? Yeah. That one there, you can see it's just going slightly pearlised, mother of yeah. pearl, on its yeah. back there. And I noticed the smaller one there has got its foot out. That's right. Where they walk around. Oh, what's that beast next to it? That, that's a, a damselfly larva. You know the ones with the, the bright blue wings that yeah. you see perched on the end of your rod or on oh, your boat? I'll see settle on my float, make yeah, your float right. sink. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. Uh, and that turns into one of those. He's, he's quite a... A vicious looking sort of beast, isn't he? He looks like something again that's prehistoric. Now that without um, a doubt is the most beautiful fly I've ever seen and the ugliest creature I've ever well, seen. Well that now here's, from. An, here's another one that's a close relation of it and that's a, a dragonfly larva. Looks like a bit of dead wood. Yeah. But they don't half shoot through the water and they're very carnivorous as well. I don't and really. eat lots of little fish. And he one day will turn, you know, he's starting to wake up now yeah. and move about. I'm glad you're holding him, mate. Uh, and you can actually <laughs> see the wing case. If you look carefully, Lee, you can see there on his back the cases that will become the wings one day. You can, yeah. You, you can, can, see, you can yeah. see there, inside there are his wings, all shriveled up, ready to spread out one day. That's incredible. Well, I'll tell you what, Steve, you've done us a right turn today. I mean, I know a few things that live un underneath where I was fishing, but you would just wouldn't believe there was anything like that amount of variety well, there's, there's in a so, relatively small stretch of water. There's so much food for the fish and so there's different sorts of snails, lots of different... So there's a little pea mussel that, that they... He's got his foot out as well. Yeah. He's, he's like a small version of the, yeah. the swan Steve, mussel. there's... That's oh, got there's out. There's one that's got out and there's another snail. It's no yeah. wonder that some days I can't get a bite of my maggots, is it? <laughs> it's not. <laughs> with all that to eat, it's no wonder that you, you ever catch anything at all. That's right. Yeah. Well, thanks ever so much for coming down, Steve. I've really enjoyed it. It's, it's absolutely intriguing. I think I might spend an hour or two with you yet. Well, I must confess, once I start dipping in it, I sometimes end up missing my tea yeah. key. So oh. many different things to find. That's fabulous. Cheers, mate. Thanks ever so much. Uh, really enjoyed it. Thank thanks. you. Is that a bite? Yeah, got him on. Good lad. Yeah, okay, look where that's fish. running, that is a good fish. I reckon it is a chub, maybe. No, there's no chub here. You've been reading too many books, mate. Might be a little carp, they've been stocked in here. How about a big roach? No, roach don't run like that. Not even big ones. How about a bream? No, nope, nor the bream. You'll go through them all in a minute. Wait a minute, we're going to see it in a second. How about a perch? No, no, it could be. Big swirl on the top. Awesome. That look like a perch, I see some... Oh, it is, here. you've got ESP. It is a perch. Come on, careful, careful. This is where you like to lose fish at their last dive. Yes. He was trying to show you cat there, Got wasn't him. he? Oh, that's the biggest fish I've ever caught, Keith. Is it? It's massive. That's a cracker, isn't it? It's a cracker. Oh. It's certainly the biggest perch you've ever oh, caught. Oh, look what he's done with the hook. Yeah, that's all right. We'll soon get that out. There. Look at that. That's a lovely fish, isn't it? Last fish of the day. Yeah. Do you want to slip him in the net? I'll hold him. I should hold his feet these down. Can I hold him first? Just hold him for a second, then. The hand's nice and wet. Well done. Swim their way up to the top of the net. Yeah, come round there, you can see him. Swimming back. There. Look at that. Come on, how'd you go? Come on. Skimmer. There they go. All back ready for another yeah. day. Let's hit the road. <laughs>